Last time, with Check the Effects on the Smart Rail series, all we have to do here is have the ticket put in the minecart and then have it go. But the thing is that the ticket would end up being stuck in this chest. How are we going to get the ticket from the chest here over into the lead cart? Well, we're going to use another minecart with a chest in it. This minecart with a chest in it, which would already have received the item, the ticket that is, in its uh, inventory to just shoot off to its next destination in order to get the item into the lead cart. Where we want to have our next stop for this minecart with the chest in it is going to be right over here. So we're going to need a hopper, put that right there, okay, and we're going to cover this up because we want to make our build look nice as well. Now I'm just putting, oh, this is a demonstration as a wall that's there. Now we're going to put some stone, oh, some hard rails going up here, like that, and then some regular rails going all the way to here, over here like this. Station number two. Let's try this out. There it goes, up and over. Station number... Two and three, off it goes, up and over, and there it goes, station number two. So it just, we just gave it the decision over there to go to station number two over here, and it just crossed over two intersections without us having to push any buttons. This is super convenient, especially when you're going over long maps and you want to just AFK. This is completely all the information is in the train itself. This is self-contained. Station number three. There it goes. Up and over. And there you go. So all three of our stations have had their trains, which were assigned to go to them, end up at the proper destination. So you can see this works. <laughs>
Now, if it's in this block here, that's fine because it pushes that one there. And if this one has one more momentum, it's going to end up forcing the one that's on this side to keep on being pushed. But what you can see here is if you have a minecart behind it, and then it happens is you have a little bit of a pushback, as you can see, as well as a push forward. But the thing is you want to make sure that that pushback is corrected. Now, in my first designs, I always had a little ramp like this that helped. And that kind of resolved the issue because essentially you had this cart that was pushing down on this one. So if there was power onto this, they would have to be forced to be going forward. Ideally, we'd probably want to have another block highlight this, um, but at some points we're not actually able to do that in this particular design unless we raise this section here. Um, I'm not going to go through raising this whole thing all over again uh, just because this is a little bit off, but this seems to work. The other consideration is having an upward ramp. Now, in that case, you have this part here and we, what happens is when you have a, ramp, a uh, minecart going up there's another minecart that goes like that and you see the little amount of pushback that's there that's because this corner of this minecart's hitbox overlaps with the block with the block that's in here so it ends up hitting this minecart and that's when you end up with some pushback to remedy that i've added these one-way ramps i like to call them and all it is is you got to make sure that these things are about five or six uh, blocks out from the base of your main ramp. So you have a ramp that's here and this is there just to make sure that it goes one way. So you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, and then it turns in and you have this little ramp that's here to correct the train. On areas such as this, you want to make sure that you have at least two or three blocks uh, before you hit the binary brain just to make sure that the minecart is going straight and you have the uh, tickets being picked up by the binary brain. So now on to the meat of our tutorial. So now our scenario is we have one minecart train that comes in and goes up and over the ramp and is waiting to have its ticket sent back to it as well. It's already changed the direction of the track or possibly changed the direction of the track into the way that it wants to go. Then we have another minecart train coming up behind it, which would also switch the rail to the way that it wants to go and if not stopped it can actually even crash into the train that's in front of it and they end up going as one train and the whole system gets messed up. To remedy this we have a buffer ramp or a ramp that is used to keep the second minecart train at bay and hold it in place while the other minecart train is processed and crosses safely at the intersection to, in the correct direction. So to begin with this tutorial, we are going to need everything that we had done prior in the previous tutorials. We're also going to need the following materials here. We're going to need some detector rails, some powered rail, some regular rails, redstone repeaters, redstone dust, redstone torches, your basic building blocks, ones that would conduct redstone current, buttons, as well as your station tickets. Also, we're going to need some minecarts and some minecrust with a chest in it in order to make sure that we can test this thing. So to start off, we're going to build our latch. So to do that, we're going to build a normal latch like usual. We're going to put it in this orientation, like this. Redstone torch is going to go over here and over here. And you can see it powers the rail above it. I'm going to take this out here, this out here, take a repeater, Repeater from torch to block, torch to block, and there we go. Also, remember to get your buttons because we need some control over this thing. And we're going to go ahead and put a button under here and a button under here. And for now, I want to make sure that the rail is powered. Next, I'm going to take my detector rail and I'm going to put that right there. Now, this may interfere with this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take that out again and put this here uh, take that out so now I'm switching back over there and I'm going to put this like so there there we go and then I'm going to take another block here put that there put my redstone dust over here and there we go now we're going to take this and we're this redstone 
wire has to come all the way to this one over here. It would come out like this. And we have to make that go up a bit as well. So we're going to go up a bit. And we're going to feed that right into there. Okay. And put your repeater in. So power, power that one. And let's take our redstone dust from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we'll put this on full ticks over here. I'm going to actually remove these, put three repeaters here, put those to full ticks like that. So now we have our line that goes from that detector rail over to the latch so that this powered rail will turn off and catch our train that comes up from behind the first one. Now we want to have a line that's going to enable the latch so that this gets powered again so that once the train is safely across, the second train will also get processed. We don't want it stuck there forever. To do that, we're going to have to put power into this block over here that's going to be eventually leading from this or this detector rail. Now, we already have some line of redstone going in from the previous tutorial that we did, and you can see it goes into here. Now, if these redstone torches were not there, we could just pull it straight out from here if we want to. We could actually uh, we could take the line out from here, you know, put the rest on dust like this. Uh, we could also take a line out from here and pull it out from there if you want to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out from here. So I'm going to take it out from this point here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to have to go around and under this one here. So. I'll start going down on this. And we'll have to go around like that. So this is going to be a, quite a bit of a ways, but let's see if I make it across like that. Yep, it's some way from there. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and we have our latch that's over there, so we want to start bringing this over up under here. And then I'll bring it a little bit further back. Okay, bring it up like that. That's, oh, don't want it too close to this redstone torch. And let's bring that over this way and like that and like that there we go so we're going to put a repeater in here and we're going to feed a redstone dust into that so take rid get rid of the excess blocks that are here because we don't need those and we're going to then take your redstone dust and we're going to take this out from here so we don't need a repeater here because we got a redstone torch that's setting the signal here so that's going to be a full redstone signal strength so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so after the 14th one this you, you get a signal here at 15 but it's just my own preference that i'd like bring it at the 15th block just to be safe so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and come around here 12 13 14 so i'm gonna pull back one because it's not gonna make the turn so put this back here one two three four and there we go we have our line of rest on wire to reset this and that's pretty much all there is to it so let's go ahead and test this out for further testing i found out that this little spot here can be a bit tight so if you can, try to avoid turns like this. That is a mistake on my part. Uh, I would suggest instead keeping this down by one block at least. So sending it down a block would greatly help this. But in order to remedy this particular type of situation, I've modified the one-way ramps so that you have three powered rail at a complete angle with no flat rail over here so that it forces it to get pushed down over here.
So let's go ahead and test this out. So we're going to go to station number one and uh, station number two. What the heck? Okay. So let's let this one go. Then we let this one go. Go. And they're stopped. First one gets to go first, and it goes to station number one. Perfect. Now the second one. Oh, we got some mounts back. Uh, he corrected himself. There we go. Let's go towards the next ramp. It's up and over. There we go. It made it. Oh, there we go. Station number two. And it made it. So I did a test with myself in the minecart on the first train without launching any other one. And I found that around here, when it bounced back, it did correct itself, but it got hung up a little too soon. So that is not good. So uh, what happens is it didn't make it fast enough to go over this ramp in time for this one ended up, well, before this this break end up being pulled on it so that's not a good thing so what I did is I added in another ramp over here just a little bit closer just to see hopefully help that from happening even further so let's go ahead and test that out okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put in station number two and I'm gonna hop in and let's go Time no bump back over there. Oh, they got some bump back. There we go. They made it this time. So this time we're going to have two minecart trains. One without me in it and one with me in it. So I'm going to try this one. I'm going to go to station number one. And I think the last one went to station two. So we'll go to station number three. So let's go ahead, I'm going to hop in, I'm going to launch my first train, I'm going to launch my own train, there it goes, and now I'm going again, oh, we got some bounce back, but it cracked itself, there we go. That one's the station number one. Up and over. And station number three. There we go. Exactly as it should be. Station three. So there we go. We made it. We put all the safeguards in for this system so far. And uh, it works. It works just fine. Now, the only thing now is that we have one train coming from one station and going to three other stations, or one of three other stations. And it only goes in one direction. So from station X, where we have our little launch ramp there, and it goes to station one, two, or three. What if we want to go from station two or three to station one or X, or from station three to station two, from station two to station three, from station one to station two or three? or to station X, how do we make this completely decentralized and have trains being going in both directions? Well, that's for the next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it informative, and I know there's bound to be a few components in this that you can use in regular rail systems other than the smart rail system as well, so please feel free to use that in your other rail systems as well. Join me next time in our next video when we're going to be going over two-way and decentralized rail systems or decentralizing this smart rail system so we can go both ways from one station to another without having to worry about a third set of track where you have to get off and get on it's just straight there if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comments section below remember to like subscribe and hit that notifications bell this is check the effects signing off i will see you in the next video peace